Welcome to Barn Box November on the last day. <laughs> I hope everyone is um, excited and happy with what we sent this month, which was the two ply fin, 100% fin yarn. Um, fin is a sheep breed. So um, it is 100% from one type of sheep. And that's one of the things that sets bare naked wools apart from other yarns is that we produce yarns that are single source or single breed uh, fibers. We try to produce, you know, as many of those as we can and find kind of specialty um, off the beaten track um, breeds to do that with that are still nice for knitting, that we still consider um, a high-end knitting experience for you. And so um, the fin sheep is um, what we would class as a heritage wool. Um, there are 1400 breeds of sheep or more than that, but um, sheep are, um, can be divided up into multiple different kinds of categories. But one way that you can think about sheep are breeds that develop slowly over time in unique locations and that are native to a certain, a certain part of the world or a certain country and have developed characteristics that are relative to the environment that, that they are raised in. Uh, so, sheep that are raised or developed in colder climates would have maybe, um, you know, undercoats that are fluffy and soft and outer coats, they might be double coated and have outer coats that are longer and shiny. And sheep that are raised high in the mountains tend to have these fluffy kinds of fleeces and sheep that are raised near the sea might have soft wool versus sheep that are raised in um, high altitudes might have longer, sturdier wool. So heritage breeds also, def also traditionally are breeds that produce different colors of wool because the, the more, let's say the more rustic um, evolution of the, of the breed allows for a wider variation in the type of, um, in the colors and the type patterning on their bodies. Modern breeds, um, which are, have been developed since the late 1800s, tend to be breeds that are developed with specific commercial goals in mind. So um, producers might take heritage breeds and crossbreed them in certain ways to get um, a higher um, meat production off of the animals or more milk or um, only white coats that would be commercially more viable because white wool is easier to dye. And so modern breeds are more refined and <clears throat> more purposefully bred. And, and they might not, um, in general, they lack the super unique characteristics in their wool that a heritage breed would have. <clears throat> and that was all a long way to say <laughs> that the fin sheep can be considered a, a traditional or heritage breed wool in that they are native to um, Finland and they're native to Finland, but they, but, but all, um, but all sheep are domesticated animals. So even though they're native to Finland and evolved in a more natural um, um, process of husbandry, they are, still, um, they are still animals that are bred by people. So even within their own breed, um, producers will, will crossbreed and try to produce generation by generation wool that is, um, or sheep that have, you know, a higher meat production and better wool production and softer wool or whiter wool or whatever their goal is as a producer. Um, in, in Finland, the weather is cold and um, windy and tends to be um, 
a little harsher in, in most areas. So the fin sheep developed a very, very thick, it's, it's a very lightweight fleece, but it's very thick. The crimp is super sharp. It's, it's a very high crimp fiber, meaning it's very springy. So it resembles merino type wools in that way. So Question. It, yes. Can I, can I ask you what you mean when you mean sharp? Is that another way of saying springy or are the crimps like well, more crimp dramatic? Is, yeah, more dramatic, more zigzaggy, a higher number of zigzags per inch than say a long wool would have. Thank you. So typ typically a colder climate will produce the long wool breeds and maybe the double coated breeds with, that have the fluffy undercoat. But the thin sheep is a single coated breed and it has a more merino type wool in that it's very springy and soft. On the other hand, it's, it's highly lustrous as well, um, which harkens to that long wool type of um, sheep. So the harsh climate also produces, um, uh, also makes the sheep produce a coat that in addition to being soft and springy has quite a bit of luster to it, which you might notice when you work with it that it, it flickers with light a little bit. It's, it's, it's a, got a nice sheen to it. Um, so the, the Finn breed was introduced into the United States in the 1960s and um, the U.S. flocks tend to be uh, more focused on producing white wool, um, although in recent years there, you know, through the interest of hand spinners and knitters, you know, kudos to us, <laughs> Um, there is a growing interest in producing a wider variety of colors in the, in the fin population in the United States. So we are now able to get a, a little bit more um, variety. This, this um, club yarn that we produced, you can even see like how airy it is in the light. It actually allows the light to shine through it. Is, a, is from a single um, source from one farm. And it, it really is a, a farm that produces a lovely wool product from their sheep. So we purchased the whole clip from last year, from the spring clip of 2020, but we had to reserve it in 2019 to get the 2020 clip <laughs> because uh, it's a highly sought after product. And um, we chose to spin it in a two ply sport weight to just to keep it nice and light and airy. We, the, the clip that we bought was entirely white and um, kind of after we secured the purchase and everything, um, I thought to ask the mill, like, can we get some dark to, you know, to create a shade so that we could have something, you know, I, f I always feel like the grays are a little more interesting than the whites, just my own prejudice, but that we shouldn't always be sending out white yarn in every, you know, shipment. So um, yes, they were able to get some um, gray and I just wanted a little bit just to make kind of a, a nice silvery gray color. So this gray is approximately 10 to 12% dark fiber along with um, 88 to 90% white fiber, which produces a fairly, you know, you know, you wouldn't think 10% would be that much, but black fiber um, is a dominating element in color. So it, it, will, it will shade it quite a bit. Um, so this two ply feels a lot thinner than you would think for a sport weight, but when you knit it and then wash it, it blooms quite a bit and, and it expands, the stitches expand to create that sport weight gauge that we're looking for. Um, I just love, I just love it. And everyone's smiling. So I'm assuming <laughs> Nadine is just, <laughs> She just can't stop smiling. So I'm assuming she's in her lap has her yarn. Yes. <laughs> so, 
still in this game because petting it is more fun even than knitting it. <laughs> it it um, gets you prepared for it. What's it, that? It it gets me in the mood to knitting it more. You know, yeah. I'm bonding with it. I'm bonding That's right. with it. That's right. You almost hate to um to use it. So up to this point, any questions about um, I mean, there's probably a million questions about fin sheep, and I will be I will be um, writing more in depth about fin sheep on our blog. Um, I we're going to be bringing um, forward a line of fin wool products. So in advance of that, I'll be you know it, I'll be writing what I hope will be educational pieces for the blog about about fin sheep. Um, I get a little nervous when I talk to crowds, <laughs> so um, so it, it, I'm much better in writing. <laughs> but um, if anybody has any questions about what I've said so far, just raise your hand. Anybody? Thank Catherine, you. of course. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> I mean of that course. too. Like I, I'd much rather you guys talk than me. <laughs> um, okay, so I got a sweater's quantity of it because I spent two days, I couldn't stop rubbing it on my face because uh -huh. it's just so awesome. How is it different from Shetland and your Shetlandia yarn? Well, it is not, um, it isn't, sorry, I keep getting little notices. It is not a um long wool it has a nice staple length from three to six inches but it is not a long wool like shetland is so mm -hmm. it it doesn't have long wools are typically more coarse they have much less crimp so what we were talking about before in terms of crimp the crimp being zigzaggy a long wool will have a more s-shaped uh fiber and so um, it if you spin it too tight, it tends to be wiry. Um, and, 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 and those long wools tend to have more drape than a springy, crimpy fiber will have. So that's one thing. Right. And um, I feel that, personally, I feel like this is slightly softer, although side by side, we're spinning them about the same way so that I do feel that they are kind of interchangeable in patterns. You might get a slightly different effect from one than the other, but this is more similar to the Shetland than it is to better breakfast fingering, for instance. I was or, curious because when, right, when we got the barn box and of course they had to Google it right away, um, <laughs> it was described as like a 50 cross between Merino and Shetland, but it felt different than that. So yeah. I found that description confusing. So that's yeah. why I asked, yeah. Actually, I, I haven't seen that. Um, I have to delve a little bit more into history of it, but from what I've read so far, the fin sheep seems to have been developed over several um, centuries in Finland from sheep that were brought through shipping trades from actually the south of Europe. So you're talking huh. about um, sheep from um, Sicily and um, other parts of Italy, Spain, which, and those sheep came from, um, you know, the Middle East, like Persia, Morocco, you know, those sheep would have come from there. So- yeah, so um, Merino, Merino may have played a, something of a part in it. Um, I, haven't, I haven't seen that. Um, yeah, it now, could have been just a, a, now, like a really fast and loose way to describe it. So right. who knows? In, it, in, but what you may have read and kind of, I'm not saying you mistook it, but what you may have read is that the fin sheep belongs to the kind of old, like I said, the old heritage breeds of short tail North, Northern European sheep. So they are like a lot of other Scandinavian breeds, the Shetland breed being one of them. Shetland actually evolved from the, uh, from the Scandinavian breeds. It is pretty certain. And Finn sheep 
most likely contributed to the um, oh. to the DNA of the Shetland sheep. So, um, so as a uh, and those are all what they call land race sheep, meaning that they're um, sheep that that developed and form their characteristics in a kind of single place that would be more isolated. So Finland being, um, you know, a fairly isolated place in, in previous centuries, Shetland being an island, um, Icelandic sheep being contained to an island environment. Um, that gives those animals the opportunity to breed widely in their geographic area, but not to be tainted by other other animals from other geographic areas. So I I I don't know if that answers what you. Oh, wondering. it totally does. Oh, yeah, there's going to be like there's going to probably be, I'll probably bore you to death with that stuff at some point. But <laughs> oh God, I but, love it. You can never yeah. bore me. keep boring. <laughs> and you know, I was thinking today. Well, people do. A couple of people have said I really miss the eBooks and blah blah. I think what might be a way of dealing with that with Barnbox is that when I've got written material that supports the Barnbox, <laughs> you know, stuff it um, written material that I might be uploading to the blog um, would be to put it in some kind of PDF format to. To put together as an ebook that if if you wanted it you could purchase it so one of the ways of keeping the cost of barn box down was not to produce the ebook for everyone because it it isn't always read or or used but if you wanted to purchase the ebook version of this maybe we can make that happen as a separate um, downloadable document that you know, would be some kind of low cost kind of ebook to buy. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, Nadine because is, I, I Nadine is raising her. Yeah, I reread all the old chapters from Bare Naked Clubs all the time. Yeah, all yeah. the time. They're so, very, so do I, I. Like, I mean, they're really informative and they're yeah. and they're interesting in that um, sheep, sheep, and and the um, the industry of raising them is a is a age old industry we've it's been with us they were some of the first domesticated animals um that you know that mankind embraced and the reason is they're so efficient you get a lot of bang for your buck um for feeding them and um and nursing them along you know um farmers for millennia have um found them to be easy to keep um, and that they produce uh, riches that enable you to um, sub subsist. So, um, and, oh my God, I forgot where I was going with that, I'm sorry. <laughs> God. It's okay, thank you um, though, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, uh, anyway, um, I think that, you know, we can probably, you know, make something happen there. Um, let's see. So for now, um, this two ply fin that you all received, I'm trying to get it close to the, a good angle on the camera. Oh, there we go. That's got a nice, you can see it has really nice stitch definition for a fuzzy fiber. I think, you know, possibly the stitch definition in this is a little bit better than the Shetlandia. Um, I don't know for sure. Um, but this two ply batch is, has been almost completely, um, either shipped or purchased by barn box people. <laughs> so it's almost gone. Hello. Um, and what we're intending to do going forward is hopefully maybe we'll be able to produce the two ply again. Um, but what we're going to do, what we've been able to do is locate sources through our New York State Mill that, um, that we can produce a yarn, a, a fin yarn in four shades. And we're gonna do it. She sent us this sample in three ply. So um, this is the, the three ply. It's a more solid, um, 
fatter. It's not a heavier yarn. You still get the same yardage and the same, you know, stitch gauge basically, but it's denser because it's three ply instead of four ply. And, and it's can you yes can you hold it up and just not move it because the okay. pictures blurry when you move it around. I okay, I know Angel warned me about that, and I can everybody see it? Yeah, yeah, that's much better. Much better. That helps so much. You know what I'm gonna do? Um, hang on one second. I'm gonna um try this, holding it up with a white paper behind it so not so much light comes through. There we go. Oh, that's yeah. much better. Much better. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's just so gorgeous. Yeah. And this is the um, oatmeal or fawn color. Now, let me just do the same thing with the, and this is the oh, two ply. The three ply. Okay. Th this is the two ply by comparison. You can see that the stitch definition is a little less distinct and that you can see right through to that white paper in the middle. Yeah. So it is like a better, like three season weight for sure. What's like that? A, like a North Carolina climate weight versus a Michigan. What, what's that? The, the two ply. Okay, I'm also gonna just hang on, wipe my camera lens just in case that's getting in the way. Um, it is definitely, it definitely feels lighter. Okay. The two the two swatches next to each other are the same size and the same gauge, but the three ply feels slightly heavier. Not a lot. Like I said, you're getting the same yardage per pound, um, but the density of the three ply and the opaqueness of the fabric is higher. And, and the yarn itself is smoother, which is why you get that better stitch definition. So, question. Um, yes. Question, Anne. If you were wanting to make a sweater like the one, let's say, you're wearing, would you go for the three-ply or the two-ply? You know, this is a fairly subtle um, texture. It's the, um, it's the misters. And it's just a knit pearl texture I'm actually wearing it in the Better Breakfast DK, which is a very soft, fuzzy um, yarn, but it is a three ply yarn. Okay. Um, I would say that the, that the three ply would be better for, for something like this. So where you're dealing with something more subtle, you might want the, the higher stitch definition. Um, and you know, when your cables are fairly large and um, fairly puffy, the two ply will be fine for that. And it and it's definitely probably preferable for color work. If you wanted to do um, color work pieces with the gray and the white together, which I've been eyeing them. I've been eyeing these pieces side by side and just thinking, oh, that'd be such a pretty color work piece you know the mm. the gray and the white it's more contrast than than i perceived on the website page you know so that's yeah. really helpful actually. It, there's definitely plenty of contrast um like i said that 10 10 to 12 percent gray is a is a big jump from white but this is the the pure white is a creamy it has a yellowness to it as opposed to like a, and I don't know why, but the, for me, the twist, the white was a little bit crisper in terms of the twist. That's another thing about our yarns because they're natural and we don't, we don't put any chemicals on the different shades to make them consistent with each other. Um, you're gonna even see differences between the white and the darker shades of a particular single breed, even when they come from the same flock. So um, I've, it's never gonna be enough to like ruin the gauge of your sweater or anything like that. But I find it really fascinating to handle the different shades side by side and to kind of explore the differences between them and know that 
I'm able to do that because they're just in their most natural state that, that they can be. So anyway, our three ply yarn <clears throat> will be available. We're, we're getting it in soon. We're thinking we're gonna start receiving it the first week of December. So this week or next week. And it'll be in, we'll be getting it in cream, the fawn color, which is, um, if I put it next to the gray, you can see it's kind of an oatmeal shade. And then there will be a medium gray and a brown. And these, uh, this fin is sourced from a couple of different farms. One is a 4-H farm, so it's kids who are raising fin sheep for 4-H. So we're always like all about, I grew up in 4-H, like, um, you know, um, we're, we're all about the 4-H thing. And then this other farm is just, just this adorable couple who are very young. They, they look like they're 15 or so. And they're homesteading somewhere up in New York State or Vermont and um, raising fin sheep. So um, I'm just super happy to be supporting that, that kind of, um, I don't know, courage, you know, in these yeah. times. <laughs> and hopefully we'll be, um, we'll be getting that, that yarn really soon. Um, I'm excited about it. Barb is knitting a sample, a sweater in, in the sample, with the sample skeins that we received. Um, and I have a pattern all ready to go to launch a sweater pattern um, that uses this stitch pattern that's in the hat and the mitts. So um, that's all ready to, to go really soon. <laughs> and a sweater, a sweater pattern in the in this in this same chart. Oh, yeah. you are such a tease! I love this pattern. Yeah, um, it is. Pattern. It is the um, unbroken cardigan. I have it in the other room. Hang on, I'll get it. And I knit it in the modern deco sport, which you can also knit it in. Um, and it, it, but it, it definitely will knit up really beautifully in this three ply. Hang on one sec. Catherine, what sweater are you wearing? Um, this is the um, uh, the Mayan puzzle, the the cardigan that goes to Aztec mazes. I'm having, you know, I had just had surgery, so my brain can't remember the pattern. Yeah. No, is it's, there a it's Kent. It's the Kent um, DK, and it just is cold, and yeah. it just feels yummy. So it looks very nice. Okay, so. Thank you. <laughs> So this is the, I don't know. I hope you guys can yeah. see this. Okay. It's can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Mostly. Yep. This nice. is a, um, I'll hold it up to myself here. So, so it's beautiful. yeah, it's a long, this one is the long um, kind of tunic length. And then the pattern has a shorter kind of a normal length. And that's the one that Barb is knitting. So very excited about all that. Hey, yeah, can you put it on? Yeah. Let me just take off and what I have. Will we be able to knit that in the two ply? Yes. It, you okay. can get the gauge in the two ply. It, it's going to be, you know, fuzzier and lighter, a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but, but the swatches I knit, um, the swatches I did came out correctly for either yarn and the modern deco, of course, which we're restocking as well. Is that going to be available in time for the sweater knit along? Yes. In January? Oh yeah, I mean, the pattern's all done. Mm -hmm. I've actually got signed off from Anne-Marie um, today. So we're just waiting for the yarn to come in really. But the, you know, you can swatch by knitting your hat or your scarf because the, the needle size is the same. So let me, just, right. let me just back up. I don't know if you can see it well enough. Okay, Riley. Okay. Oh, it's beautiful, Anne. Right. Really lovely. Yeah. I love the, the collar. The collar yeah, is just the collar yeah, is really the nice. Best. Yeah. 
Now, the one thing I did, I changed the collar a little bit because it was spreading out more than I really wanted. So it, it is in the pattern just up a little bit more. You know, it's still ribbed and it's still just as wide, but it stands up a little bit better. This being my prototype that I knit, so yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and the button band is all incorporated into it. <clears throat> oh, nice. Ding, I like ding, that. Ding, ding, ding. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So there's no, I mean, but you have to remember to knit your buttonhole every so often, you know, right. it's, it, if, um, that's the one thing about the incorporated button band. Okay. Sorry. Thank we you. Got, we kind of got off on a tangent there. <laughs> but it's even like, I think it's really pretty with the collar turned up too, you know, that the contrast of the ribbing and the, I was thinking of ways to make a, a pullover and what would make it kind of distinctive. Maybe having that inset like that. Anyway. So. Um, Another question I have for you is how would that be against like bare skin? The, the fin, it's pretty soft. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can kind of tell from the skein itself, the, the, let me see, I would say that the three ply is a little less prickly than the two ply Okay. because the nature of a two ply yarn is that it, the ends of the wool fibers are going to come out, you know, um, it's just not spun as densely when you make a three ply yarn at the same weight, the plies are much, much thinner and they're spun much more tightly. So the little fiber ends get caught in better. And, um, and, and so they don't, they don't bloom with the, the wool ends quite as uh, ferociously as the two ply will, <clears throat> if that makes sense. And I, yeah. I don't want anybody to go away from the discussion of the two ply versus the three ply with a prejudice about one or the other. They have each their own lovely character and their own uses in knitting. And um, so, I, you know, they're both have lovable qualities. <laughs> All right. I really like the stitch definition with the two ply. This is my mitt. Uh huh. I'm on the laptop, so it has a terrible camera. But no. that no, um, actually, I think it's that has good stitch definition. Yeah, it looks really plump, and but it hasn't uh, been blocked yet. It will flatten a little, but even so, I think it's. You know, it's so interesting. Um, you you could you could perceive the idea that it's going to flatten as giving you less definition not all but actually but actually washing it also evens out the stitches mm -hmm. so that it actually can that contributes to better stitch definition so it while it does lose some depth it it um gains some ability to be highlighted you know for the stitches to um catch light and 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 allow light to travel mm -hmm. along the fabric surface so that it brings out the the pattern more so anyway mm -hmm. um there were like a million things i was going to say that i can't remember at the moment but but please ask questions you guys <laughs> <laughs> Um, we did, we did expand the barn box subscription to, and I think we've sold quite a few more. So if you, if you know anyone who didn't get in, um, on the first round, we do have some left in the second round and, um, we're always happy to sell out again. <laughs> <laughs> How many people do you have in the barn box? I think with this expansion, we were aiming for 400 mm -hmm. um but 
I, I could be mistaken about that, but I think that's what we expanded to. How far in advance do you start planning each shipment? Like, you know, I'm assuming that some mm -hmm. of these things take a year or more to come to fruition to get all of the yarn and to get it sourced and everything. Yeah, it, they are, um, they are, we are fortunate that we're finally able to work on these things far enough in advance. You know, often with the old clubs, for some reason we were always kind of scrambling, but um, Barb and I have planned out through next August, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and we and and those are definite things that we've got like ordered so that's pretty far in advance and we're always working you know we're always looking at new things so um we're pretty oh hi maya i haven't seen you in so long hi <laughs> One of the, one of the, I, I know I mentioned this in one of the previous, oh, I'm sorry. Does anyone else have a question they want to ask? Just one question. Uh, the fin, is yes. it gone? The ones, the the quality we got, the pe the kind we no, got. No, there I don't were, see there are white ones left, I believe. If I'm not. Where, where should I look? Um, In the club on the club picks page or if you're on the website you can go to the search at the top the little um magnifying glass okay and put in fin dandy okay and it should bring it up and um the gray is sold out i'm pretty sure and the white the last time i looked there were probably 20 or 30 white skeins left and the white is really nice too. Mm -hmm. And will you be doing a cardigan version of that lovely uh, um, pullover version of that lovely cardigan? Well, that's what I was saying. I've been thinking of how I might do that. So yeah. Um, like nice shawl neckline and that'd be great. I was thinking that that V could just be an inset, you know, maybe. Yeah. Um, I got to think about it a little bit more, but yeah, I've been, I've been tossing around ideas for that, but I think I promised somebody that I would do the, um, the pasture grays, um, car cardigan purse. <laughs> Robin, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe some people joined since we, um, since we started, but if you are welcome to unmute yourself and speak up anytime, it's a fairly small group, I think. Yeah. Yeah. There are there are 16 of us. So if anybody wants to pipe up and ask something or or contribute, I, I always wonder like when I do these, is there some thin farming expert in in the group that's sitting there going <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, hopefully not. Hopefully. I have another question if nobody does. Um, yes. And if you guys have already asked and answered this, then just tell me to zip it. Um, what out of your sweater patterns would be like fantastic go tos for this yarn? Well, thank you, Catherine. Yes. <laughs> well, because I have the sweater quantity and I haven't decided. I love the yarn so much. I bought it without a project in mind. So I thought, Ooh, okay. <laughs> Barb is knitting wild fillies with it. And, um, I haven't decided what I'm, I grabbed a sweater quantity. I haven't decided what I'm going to knit with it, but, um, Barb is knitting wild fillies. I think the C fret would be beautiful. Um, let's see, let me just go into the store. I always forget what I, what all I've designed. Um, let's see. That was my question, Catherine. So thank you for answer asking it. Oh, well, you could have. <laughs> I, well, I was going to, and then you said um, so. Think, perfect. You know, we knit four hundred five lex with the um, Shetland. Was it Shetland? No, with the Jacob yarn, and I just love that sweater in the Jacob and this yarn 
is a lot also like the Jacob. So the Jacob, the Shetland, and the and the Finn two ply are all kind of the same character of yarn and can be used more or less interchangeably. Um, that totally you could, helps. Yeah, you could do, you could, you could probably do Aztec mazes and it would be really light and airy um, because that calls for sport yarn. And Bel Air is another one that calls for a, like a light sport weight yarn. Ooh. Um, that's my next one, Bel Air. Yeah. Um, Ela Ciaz is another. Somebody was gonna swatch for counterweights with. Them. I am. That was one oh. I was gonna, for the January sweater knit along. Mm -hmm. Did you do it yet? Did you? Did it work no. out or? No, not yet. Probably Alfred. deep dive would deep dive would probably be really pretty. Um. Catherine, what in the world have you been doing? Ivar. <laughs> Ivar would be nice. Um, oh, I just knit Ivar. Ivar would be nice in this. Yeah. Mucarnas could work. Um, um, over the water, that would be a nice one. Even, you know, Renee was pattern for a sport yarn and it was the yarn that I used was um, uh, like a, a BFL or something like that, which was dense, but this would be nice and light and airy in Renee, which would kind of counteract the stiffness that that fabric has a kind of natural stiffness to it. So the Seafret cardigan or pullover, subterraneans would be another one. Oh yeah, I mean that surprises knit. me. Yeah, you couldn't hit the misters. Triticum. Yeah, there's lots of choices. Wild horses or wild fillies. Isn't this oh. subterranean? It's a fingering though. It's not too heavy for that. I I think you have to swatch, and if you can get yeah. the gauge, then it doesn't matter. This is such a light, um, airy yarn. I think it would compress plenty well to knit that oh okay. I mean I mean Barb got um Barb got perfect gauge for wild fillies with it oh and I knit the original wild fillies with better breakfast fingering and then we did another one with um the Jacob sport so that makes me think the thin sport would work really well Anybody else have a question about, and shawls, I mean, it would be such a pretty shawl in the, you know, in the tradition of a Shetland wool shawl in that um, it's, it's so light that you could get a nice warm shawl without feeling like you have two pounds of yarn on your shoulders, you know. Would you say that's the, true? Would you say that's true of both the two ply and the three ply? I would say the three ply would feel heavier. It is denser. So it's uh, it's hard to translate that unless you're actually feeling it, but the it's hard to explain why <laughs> one, two yarns that are spun the same yards per pound from the same kind of fiber feels and looks so different. Um, and you know, the density and everything is so different. Um, but they, but it's true. <laughs> but, and they still knit to the same gauge. It's like, it's like the three ply knit to the same gauge has more depth. So all of that extra is going into the fatness of it. And the two ply is a thinner, lighter fabric and probably equally warm since it's fuzzy. Because the thing about, knitted fabric is that the warmth comes from how much air it captures, not how thick it or heavy it is. Yeah. So um, even something light that you can see through that has a lot of holes can be encapsulating lots of nice insula insulating air for you. 
I think last time I said, you know, oh, I was kind of hinting around about the yarn for November. And I said, oh, this yarn was three years in the making. <laughs> um, and it, this, this yarn has been three years in the actual making, you know, of securing the fleece and, and doing the mill samples and, and all of that. But um, in actuality, this, this yarn is kind of dear to me because the idea for doing it and the love of really of discovering fiber in, in quite this way really goes back to like when I first began hand spinning about 15 years ago, I, you know, someone taught me to hand spin at the yarn shop and gave me like a bag of a pound of wool and I went home and ruined it all in, in no time, you know, just trying over and over. And then, you know, I got it. I got the idea and started spinning some halfway decent yarn, but I didn't have any wool left. So I, I went on eBay <laughs> because there was no Etsy or Ravelry or anything then. I went on eBay and I bought some fin fiber and some Coopworth fiber, like a, ba a little bag of each and some Cormo. And looking back on it, I mean, I just picked stuff. I didn't know what any of these things were. <laughs> Um, but I ended up picking kind of a good group of, of things to experiment with. And the fin fiber was pretty dirty when I got it. It had a lot of um, vegetable matter, you know, hay and pieces of grass and stuff in it. And I, I painstakingly picked all that out as I was spinning it and I, all the while like grumpy about it. And I was kind of like ready to um, disown the yarn when it was done because I was frustrated. But then I washed it. And I just was just so um, smitten with it after it was washed. And it really was that whole process of discovering something I never heard of and cleaning it and spinning it by hand and then watching the metamorphosis of the yarn into something very, very knitable, very covetable I was just, it just, drew me into that whole idea of like, I want to make yarn. <laughs> and, um, and then through hand spinning after trying all different kinds of fibers, I, I just thought I want to, I wish other people could have this experience that I'm having with, with falling in love with actual breeds of, of fiber and um, the natural, the way it feels when it comes off the sheep and is so different than when it's been through you know, some yarn company process. It It's just so different. And that's the kind of inception of the, you know, the urge that kept bringing me back to like, I wish we could make yarn. I wish we could make yarn. And then one day we did make yarn. <laughs> hey, <Anne>. Now we are, <laughs> yeah. Um, people are having trouble finding the fin on the website. So uh -huh. I, I just uh, sent a message to Angel and asked her about it. And she says that you are sold out. So I oh, don't okay. know if okay. maybe somebody yeah. just, just in the past few minutes grabbed the last couple of skeins. Okay. Yeah, it said that it is sold out. Okay. I, the parts. other day, on Saturday when we, and that might be because on Saturday when we talked about it um, in the knit along, uh, I went back and checked how many we had and there were, you know, it was down. So it's gone. I guess you'll, you just have to trade for it if you want it. <laughs> um, we'll, we can try again for this. Uh, I will talk to, um, I will talk to the source for that and see what we can do. You'll go to I, the Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Jim would be like, so chuffed to be called the Oracle. <laughs> He's the nicest guy. Um, Who's Jim? Jim owns the mill that spun the yarn for oh, us. Oh, okay. They bro they brokered the sale of the wool to us. So well, tell him thank you because yeah. I'm in I love. Will. <laughs> <laughs> I will, and then um, yeah, it is it is pretty special. I had to sneak it into the house because I had the sweater quantity and I had the girl who's been helping me clean out stuff for my renovation. And 
She helped me organize my stash this summer. She's back from college. She came today for the first day. She saw the package of Finn and she <laughs> yelled at me that I had bought more yarn. And I said, no, you don't understand. You are not allowed to yell at me about this. This is like, this is like the Rosetta Stone of yarn. I need this yarn. She's awesome. like, are all these yarns different? I was like, girlfriend, you have no idea. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's so. special stuff. So I know I'll want more. I'm sure I will. And for those who uh, may not have, um, you know, may find these things better by hearing about them. Um, you know, we've got some gift tags on the website that I think are free downloads. So um, please help yourself to those items. They're pretty, Kaya designed them and um, Angel, you know, wanted more. So they're there. We also have our Red Scarf fundraiser happening right now through the end of December. And um, we're doing really well with that. I'm, I'm so grateful and pleased. We're, we're probably gonna double this year, our best year ever. So I'm, I'm super excited. Yeah, it's, it's really good. Um, we also have coming up in January, a sweater knit along, a selfish sweater knit along. And I- I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> yeah, and I think maybe, let me look. I don't know what all has gone out. Yep, it's posted. Um, oh, that's actually really pretty. Um, Elizabeth, can you put the link up? I, I don't know. I don't exactly know how to do that in the- For the sweater knit along? Yeah. Can you put it in the chat for, for this? Uh yes. I know. Yeah. If you go, are you on your iPad, Am? I'm on Zoom in my iPad and I don't want to go to the website, but I can see the web I can see the website on my I can get it. I on can... my desktop monitor and I don't want to exit right. the Zoom since I'm running it or I'm hosting it. Um Hang on here just one second. I'm pulling it up now. I'm I, that I already I've... joined it. Awesome. It's really pretty page. It is a pretty page. <clears throat> so we'll be doing the sweater knit along um, starting in January. Um, I'm not, does it say what day we're starting? And as usual, there are prizes and all that stuff. Uh, start date is January 1st. Oh, let's see. Sean. Yay. End date March six, so that's quite a while. Yeah. You can make a you can make a Maryland sheep and wool sweater. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for it. I usually do this on my iPad or through the email. Hang on a second. There's got to be a better way, but I'll grab it. I have a question: Is uh -huh. the Costa Figuera that Catherine made? That's the same as the Elias pattern, sort of, right? It's the same stitch pattern in a different gauge. So the gauge oh. isn't the same. So the Elias is patterned for a heavier, the sport weight yarn. Okay. And the okay. Costa Figuera is really for like a light fingering yarn. So okay. the, like the modern deco lace weight, the um, stone soup, or the Shetlandia. Mm -hmm. Shetlandia would work really well for that as well. Okay. This yarn might be slightly heavy, but it might work. You know, you, you just have to get, you have to swatch. Right, right. Because I was just looking at how the, instead of the pattern going down the middle of the V-neck, it goes on both sides. Right. Because it comes out in a smaller gauge, there's more room to, to put, there's, there are more stitches and, and it's a narrower yeah. panel and you can fit it that way. I get, yeah. I understand now. Yep. Yeah. Plus, um, the idea of that was, goes back to Ivar, really. It's sort of a mimic of Ivar mm -hmm. where someone was like, can you make a jumper out of Ivar? And... <laughs> I was like, sure. Then when I, I was going to do it and I was like, why would I do that? Why don't I just design something different? 
that's like Ivar. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's how that came about. I just okay. put the link to the selfish sweater knit along in the chat. So you can get to it from the chat and find out about it. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Oops. Catherine, Catherine where'd you go? I'm here. I just went straight to the website. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for those of you that don't know i had surgery last week so i'm brain dead so when these things come up i have to do them right away or i'll forget so i'm impressed that you're you're up and about yeah, i know today's my up. first day like on the couch so i feel yeah. very successful yeah you're dressed you good. yeah you look really yeah. good yeah that's it i'm dressed in my <laughs> yeah sweater um and the sweater knit along the fee includes a free sweater pattern so um fyi like the the knit along we're currently running for red scarf is a entirely a donation you know it didn't include a free pattern because we were trying to raise money for the scholarship so um but that we'll be back to normal operation with knit alongs in January where you, where you get stuff. <laughs> and the knit alongs have been so much fun. If anybody wants to do it, I, I mean, we've had so much fun sharing, learning together. Well, it's like somebody is holding your hand because, you know, so many of us had, um, speaking for a friend, so many of us had issues with <laughs> button bands or um like i had really i have like tyrannosaurus rex arms and so you know my increases all had to change and just mm -hmm. listening to people to how they change the pattern to fit them is is worth the zoom meetings oh my gosh yeah, oh, yeah. or how they just solve other types of problems right, you know? right. first time seamers um, oh, first yeah. time sweater knitter, Robin. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yes. To be able to make a sweater that actually fit me was mm -hmm. amazing. Fit you beautifully. Oh, thanks. <laughs> well, and I've never been on a knit along <laughs> ever, and I'm wanting to make a sweater that will fit me. And I definitely love the knit spot yarns. <laughs> so I'm not even sure how much I would need to you know, get ahead of time in order to make something that would fit me and not, <laughs> you know, a kid of 12. <laughs> <laughs> I do have, um, I do have some craftsy classes that include information about fitting. So, I, um, you know, that, I don't know if that, I mean, hopefully that will help, help you getting some good measurements ahead of time and doing all that prep work ahead of time is, the, you know, gives you the best um, start to that kind of thing. I think the craftsy classes are on sale, like more than half price off too. So, um, and they're like Anne's in-person classes. So they're amazing. Her sweater fitness class and the, um, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's and, and worth it. Um, in, in some ways they're better because the photography gets right down on top of my hands while I demonstrate things or right down on top of a drawing that I'm doing or something. So okay. in that way, they're actually more helpful. Sometimes in-person classes are crowded and you can't get close enough to see what I'm really doing, you know. Although, you know, it's always worth taking classes. <laughs> That's right. It's meeting the other people. <laughs> All right. Well, if if nobody else has any questions or anything, um, or wants to say anything, or <laughs> has any feedback to give, um, you know, please do. We we're always trying to learn about what our customers need. So, I'll keep up the good work. We appreciate all your efforts. Oh, I I we certainly do. I'm yeah, doing love what I love, and that's more than. It a lot of people get to say. <laughs> it's very true. Well, thanks for being here. And we'll get back together in another couple months. All right. And then there's oh. Ravelry. Don't forget the Ravelry threads. That's Bye. right. And don't forget the knit alongs. And don't forget to <laughs> I know the knit alongs are really fun. That's yeah. right. So we can all see each other.
Don't forget to post on Instagram. Yeah. All right. Bye, Thank everybody. Thank you for amazing yarn. I love it. Yes. All right. See you Me later. Too. Bye. 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 <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We have to go. <laughs>